Hello, this is Larry from LarryRicker.com, and I just want to do a quick video before I get right into building my Appium test that uh, I want to outline how you get an IPA file. It's, it's part of the basic configuration that you're going to need inside of the Appium desktop. Um, it needs uh, a, to have a, an IPA file, and the IPA file can be a file that's out on, on a web server that can be downloaded, or it could be a file that's right on your local hard drive. I'm going to pull it in from my local hard drive, but you have to get an IPA file. Now, if you're a corporate developer, you know what an IPA file it is. It's the file that you build your iOS app, and you zip it up, and you mail it off to your testing team, and then they installed on their devices and begin testing. But if you are an indie developer, like I am, you don't ever work with IPA files at all because you work in Xcode, you build your system, you export it, and then you submit it up to the App Store through Xcode. So I'm going to show you where that process, uh, where you get the IPA file in that process. Uh, so, And we're going to need that when we start using the um, Appium desktop. So, so this is um, Xcode, and you're you know, hopefully familiar with that. And you can um, set up your device, and uh, it appears I don't have a device plugged in here, so I'm going to plug one in here. And then you can do your build on, on your device, or you can just build it locally. And uh, you make sure it builds properly. And then typically you would if you have the device installed, you do you choose the device, and then you pick from your. So it's showing that there's no devices at the moment, and then as soon as the device registers, it'll show up here, and there it is. And so you click next and done, and then you've got your device. You got all your information about your de device. You also have your identifier here, which uh, actually I'm going to snag that just because it seems to be a little different than the view. Oh, that's my MacBook Pro. Well, okay, yeah, now actually this is all in lowercase. That's exactly the same as it was in the other view. Okay, so actually you're gonna need this identifier here on your device for the configura configuration of Appium. Um, you're also gonna need the version number. And, uh, ah, it may be that that version number actually because it mismatches slightly. Uh, maybe that's an issue here. So I'm just going to try that um, in my next video. I'm just going to save that. Okay, um, so you've got your device and you do your product and you do your build and you can just run it on the device if you'd like and um, that'll start the app up. It compiles it and it creates, in the process of doing this, it actually creates an IPA file and then it copies it over over the USB port and then puts it right on your device and then starts it up running. But you don't see that process going on. So the way you can get an IPA out of this whole ecosystem is as follows. What you do is you, after, after you're done with the build, I'm going to stop this build. The way you get the file to an archive is you choose product archive. What that does is it recompiles your, your project, zips it up, puts it in an um, archive file, and the archive file actually contains your IPA file, and then it puts it in your project organizer. And that's where you have to go to get your IPA file. So I'm just going to run through this process and show you that. Now, this does take some time. And for that, I apologize, but um, I'm kind of impatient and didn't want to go through each of my apps and go through this compile build step over and over again, particularly the part where it creates all these build files and puts them into the organizer. Because as you can see, it takes a fair amount of time to do this. Um, it goes through a lot of steps. It's doing like things at the top of the screen there. So uh, I've taken this and put it into a... Uh, a shell script and I did the um, Xcode command line version so 
and in the shell itself, I have this um, series of scripts that uh, they actually they're uh, like archive.shell. That's not type, it's cat. And that one calls my other two scripts, and uh, these, uh, this one will archive up my uh, free versions. And so this script goes through, and it loops through my targets. And my targets are right there in Xcode, and it pulls them right out, and it goes through a loop, a for loop, and uh, do, and then down to the done. And then it runs this Xcode build and this other Xcode build. One of those Xcode builds actually builds a project, and the other one does the archive. So I ran this um, this morning when I left for the house. And um, when I came back, um, I'll check here in a minute. All the um, organizers should actually be filled with all my files already, so I can um, continue from there. So. Um, that's just a, a time-saving mechanism that I like to do, just because I'm impatient. And as you can see, it's still building. It does take quite a, a while to actually do this archive. So now you can see it's doing the archiving, uh, which I guess is zipping it up and uh, putting it into a compressed file. And uh, more and more steps, copying, compressing. Uh, it just, it takes a while, and it does take a lot of patience to sit here and watch it. And once it completes, it just automatically drops you into the project organizer. Or the organizer. You can get to the organizer directly, like right here. You click on Window, and you can go to Organizer. So if you happen to click out of Xcode and go back, you can always go back in this way. And as you can see, there's a new binary that was created this morning, today, June 7th, at 7.41 a.m. And then I kicked off one for the progress report, our project status here. And there was one generated at 7.50 a.m. And if I go back to this view, it, it's probably just finishing up. And then it'll, it'll drop it right in here. And there'll be two binaries sitting right here. Um, so each one of these did generate one uh, this morning at different times as they executed in sequence and uh, built each binary and put them all here in the zip file. Now, once you have them in here, in order to test, to set it up for Appium, you need to extract an IPA file. So you select your um, app from the organizer and you go over here to the side and there's an export button. You click on that and then it's going to say, okay, you want to save it for the app store? No. Save it for ad hoc deployment? No. Uh, save for enterprise deployment? No. Save for development deployment? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to use this for development. This is development testing. So you choose that option, you click Next. And again, it forces you to wait again. It does ask you to authenticate your um, development to make sure that you paid your hundred and four dollars and some odd cents every year for your development license and then uh, you select that it's going out to your developer site validating that you have valid credentials now you could choose to do it on one device or multiple devices here at the screen I there's, I don't see any reason why you'd want to do it for one specific device. It would be, it would create a smaller binary, but it would only be like for an iPhone 6 or an iPhone 7 or an iPhone iPad. Um, this is a universal application. It runs on iPads, iPhones, all different types of iPhones and iPad minis. 
So I want everything bundled in there. Then you get to this screen and you can choose these options. If you uncheck some of these options, it might reduce the size slightly, but um, I'm not gonna change anything here. And then you click the next button. And now you have to have a place where you're gonna put this file. So you wanna store it in a directory. And I chose to put it under Documents. And I created an Apps directory. So that's the place where I'm going to store each of my IPA files. Okay, now we're finishing up here. Fine. Okay, now as you can see, it's saying creating project status.ipa. And it drops you to this screen, and it's already defaulted to this directory. You have, you have to navigate through here, find the place where you want to store the file, and it gives you a file naming convention, which is, of course, the year, the month, the day, and the hour, the minute, and the second. And then you just <clears throat> click the export button. And what that does is it creates an, an IP, it creates a directory on the file system here. And inside that directory is your IPA file. So now you have to take the full path to this file and copy that and put that into your Appium desktop application. So I'm going to cover that in the next video. But uh, that's how you get an IPA file if you didn't know how to get one.